powered by MC22, this is Piano Lesson, and I am Dorothy Hecht. I'll be taking you through our lesson today, starting with some basics and ending with some chord accompaniment for a song that you can sing along to. Let's get started. So if you've never played around on your keyboard before, this should be something that you can relate to at home. If you are already a little bit familiar with piano or have taken lessons in the past, some of this could be a little bit of a review. So just kind of settle in and um, take what you need. Also know that you can pause at any time. And if it's moving a little quickly for you, you can take a moment to catch up and um, really absorb the information as it's coming. Okay, as you sit at your keyboard, you're going to notice, or you should already notice, that your, your notes uh, start very low and go on up and get very high on the right end of the keyboard. So we start low on the left and end up high. What you'll also notice is that we have black keys and white keys, and the black keys are grouped in groups of two and groups of three, alternating all the way up from the lowest to the highest point in the keyboard. If you are playing with a full keyboard, which would be 88 keys, black and white, you would also have a portion of a group of black keys at the very lowest end as well. It's very important to make note of the position of these black and white keys because as we learn our notes, each of the notes that we learn will have its same specific sp position in relationship to these groups of, of black keys. Our musical alphabet consists of seven letters, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, and starts to repeat again at A. Each of these notes has a specific position in relationship to our groups of three and two. So let's start with C, D, and E. If you come to your piano, and look for the middlemost group of two. If you're playing on an instrument that has a brand, it would probably be the group of two nearest to beneath that brand. This group of two black keys houses C, D, and E. Now, if you find any other group of two black keys along your keyboard, you'll find those same notes, C, D, E. lower in pitch or higher in pitch, but always C, D, and E. So if you were to go to the piano and locate a C, all you would need is a group of two. The groups of three house F, G, A, and B. This is true all the way up and down the keyboard as well. And at the very lowest part of your keyboard where you have only a partial, you only have A and B. So the very lowest end of your full keyboard would start with A. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then it repeats all the way up to the top, or the highest point, where we end with C. Take a moment to familiarize yourself with all of these notes. And once you are ready, we're going to start with a C position. Everything I'm teaching today is going to be using the same C position. So, let's start again by finding the middlemost group of two and locate C. This is your middle C, and it's important because it divides your keyboard between high notes or treble or low notes or bass. We're going to use our right hand, and we're going to place our hand so that C is the lowest note. A side note about our hands. When we start to read music, we are going to refer to finger numbers. On each hand, your thumb is finger one, finger two is your forefinger, finger three is middle, finger four is your ring finger, and finger five is your pinky. Okay, back to the piano. One will be on C, that means two is playing D, three is on E, four is F, and five is on G. With your left hand, find the next group of two lower than your middle C group, and find C. We're going to put finger five on this C. Finger four then plays D, three is E, two is F, and one is G. 
this is our base or this is our C position. And when I refer to a position in the future or a five note scale with a particular letter name, that would mean that that letter or that note name is the lowest note in the position. So if you were to place your hands on that position, that would be the lowest note. I would, I would recommend that you take some time this week and just kind of practice getting familiar with which fingers are on which notes so that when you're called to do so in your music that you can just not have to look down at your hands and you're able to just know that, oh, that's my finger three, that's my E. Okay, in the next segment we're going to tackle some musical terms and I will show you how to find this position on the musical staff. Okay, now we're going to build on what we just talked about in our last segment where I left you with your C position. Hopefully you are getting acquainted with how to find that quickly on your piano. Now I'm going to show you how to read that in your music. So this is going to move fast, there'll be a lot of info, but hopefully at the end of it you'll have enough to go on this week and work on a couple of little pieces on your own. Okay. In the, very, in the very beginning of your music, you'll see some symbols. You'll have some staff. That's your lines and spaces. In your staff, you'll have five lines numbered from one to five, from the bottom going up, and then four spaces inside the staff. So four spaces going in and up. And you'll, for a piano, you'll have to learn how to read both bass clef and treble clef because we have notes that are above middle C and everything above middle C is your treble clef played by your right hand and you have a bass clef or your low notes, everything played by your left hand and that's on the bottom staff. So that much of it is pretty easy to keep straight. In the beginning then you'll see a treble clef on the top and then a bass clef on the bottom. Each note name then has an assignment as far as a line or a space. So middle C itself can stand alone. Middle C has its own line and doesn't really belong to either staff. So it can be written closer to your treble clef so that your right hand can play it or closer to your bass clef. You just really have to pay attention to some of its placement. And then you'll notice that if you're looking at your music, it steps. It steps up from a line to a space, to a line, to a space, and that corresponds with each letter name change. So as I'm playing my C position, I'm noticing that middle C is my first note, the next note is a space line, or is a space D. The third note is line one, which is E. Your space one is F, and your line two is uh, treble G. As you're reading this music, you'll also see that there are some numbers above the music and below the music. Those refer to the finger numbers I talked to you earlier, about earlier. So if you're placed with your first finger on middle C, you should already be in position for this and you should be able to look at your music without having to look down at your hands, which is the ultimate goal. With your left hand here in your bass clef, my bass C is in space two. And notice that I'm stepping up from bass C to D, which is the third line. E, which is space one, two, three. F, which is line four. And space one, G. A little note about rhythm here. There are some basic rhythms, rhythmic notes to learn. And for this lesson today, we're really focusing in on quarter notes and whole notes and half notes. A quarter note has one count and it looks like this. It has a filled in note, or note head 
and a stem. The note head is the part of the note that you have to look at to know which note to play. A whole note has no stem and is open. So when you see one of when you see a whole note, you know that you have to play it and hold it for four counts. A half note then has a stem like a quarter note, but it's also open. So we're going to hold that for two counts as well. All right, all you need to do now, all you need now is the information that this is a repeat sign. And when you see a repeat sign, that means that you're going to start over from the beginning. One last piece before we get started is the time signature. So we have our staff, we have our grand staff, which shows the treble clef, bass clef. And when we play music, we are dividing that music into little bites called measures with a bar line. And in each measure, we have the same amount of counts. This is just another way of organizing our music. In the very beginning, we have something called a time signature, which tells me how many counts in a measure and what kind of note gets one beat. We are going to be sticking to 4-4 time for quite a while. So 4-4 four, four time tells me I have four beats or counts at every measure and that a quarter note is the note that gets one beat. So if you look with me now on 1A of our, of our piece here, I'm stepping up and I'm starting with C and notice that in my bass clef I don't have anything written to play. I'm going to start with middle C and, and count to four in each measure. Here's my repeat sign. If I wanted to repeat that line, I could. For now, I'm just going to go on to my last note, which is a whole note, two, three, four. I'm going to repeat that same process, but I'm playing this in my bass clef in line B. Line C, you get to venture into both hands at the same time. One other note I'm going to leave you with. is talking about changing direction in your music. So if you're noticing on the staff that the notes are higher in the staff, you're stepping up or you're moving to the right. If the notes are moving down on the staff, you're moving left, you're going lower. So let's build a little bit on what we already know. So we've learned that when we step up on a staff, going from line to the next space to the next line, that we're actually stepping on the keyboard from letter name to letter name. But we know that music doesn't just step. So let's also talk about skips. When we skip on the staff, you can see that you're moving from one line to the very next line, either up or down. You're or you could be skipping from a space note or a space to another space right next to one another with maybe just one line in between. When you see that, the way to interpret that on the piano is that you're skipping over a finger or skipping over a letter name. All of these things are applicable. So I am in line four. I am skipping from E to G. And then I see that I'm stepping down. And you can take that with you into your assignments as you check out these songs this week and try them on your own. 
All right. Now we're going to talk a little bit about chords, and chords are going to set us up for our final segment today. To play a chord on the piano, you're actually going to be uh, thinking about that five note scale that we learned, where we learned C. This is a C major pentascale. To play a C chord, I'm going to take that C, add a third, and then add a fifth, which would be five notes away from C, or the fifth note of the scale. If I play those together, that gives me a C chord. So likewise, if I started on any other note, and I played a third above that note, and a fifth, it would give me a chord. Now to get a major pentascale or a major five note scale that actually takes a certain pattern of whole steps and half steps, which we're going to get into later on. But for now, I'm going to guide you through a short chord backing for the song Can't Help Falling In Love. I hope you're able to play along and have a good time with it. Thanks. In our final block today, we're going to talk about, or we're going to learn how to play chords with Can't Help Falling In Love. Um, every, almost everyone knows this song, and I love this song because it's nice and low key and it's pretty and it's on the plus side for you, a little bit on the slow side. So we're going to start with learning the chords that are involved in this song. Let's take a look first at our verse and our chorus. So, the th part that your left hand is actually going to play in this song is going to be pretty simple. You're going to play just the note name or the root of the chord for each chord that we'll be playing. So, in the beginning, we're going to be starting with a, a C, a G, which should be your first finger in your left hand, E, and you'll have to move a little bit to reach A with your first finger, F, back to C, and then to G. The chords we're going to use are C chord, which remember, our root is the bottom of the chord, and we build up in thirds, G, so that would be a G, an E, a B, and a D, A chord, a minor chord, which would be A, C, and E, and also E minor chord, E, G, and B. This is a basic 4-4 four, four time signature, and we're just going to be playing chords on each count, just like this. With your left hand, you're going to hold a whole note for each of the root notes. All right, we're going to start with this. We're going to start with the verse, and the progression for the verse starts with four counts on C, or two counts on C. Sorry about that. Two counts on E minor. Four counts on A. Two counts F. C for two counts, and then G. F for two, G for two, A, we're going to hold for a half note, F for a half note, C, two, G, two, C, two, three, four. That's our verse. If you've forgotten what a half note is, that's two counts. So again, you'd just be holding for two counts, that A minor. So all of these chords are in root position. I left them in root position this time because I thought perhaps it might be easier to locate the chords if you um, could locate them 
by the, the bottom of the cord and build up. If this is not something that's new to you, then you might want to try to do a little chord inversion, which actually makes the progression through the chord so much easier to play. So let's take a look at that. I'm going to take my C chord and I'm going to invert it. And by inverting, all we're doing is changing the order of the notes from the bottom up to the top. I'm sending my C up to the top so that E is the bottom of my chord now. E, G, C same chord. From this inversion, I can reach the rest of my chords much more easily. So here's C. To go to E minor, all I would need to do is place my finger down on B. E and G are already down. A minor then keeps E and plays A and C on top. Moving to F, keep A and C, and step up to F. You know C. To play G, I already have my G down in the middle, so I'm going to play B and D on the bottom. F again is in root position. G. Back to C. G. C. And that's your verse. I'm going to add my left hand into it now and sing along with it. Wise men say only food. That's the first verse. You can go on to the second and every other verse after that, it will follow that same pattern. All right, so if you've mastered your verse and you're ready for the chorus, let's take that on as well. For the chorus, we're going to use the chords B, E minor again. We're going to add a new one, B major which is going to require two of our black keys. So from E, you're going to play two, the black keys both to the lower end of that E. That's B. We'll go back and forth with that a few times. And then we end with a D minor, which is D, F, and A. And then it comes back to G. Okay, so as we count it, it's two counts per chord. E minor for two, B for two, E, two for B, two, three, four, two, three, four. That was two counts on D minor, two counts for G. With my left hand, I'm just going to shift down one step so I can reach B and also play E without having to move a whole lot. Two counts on E, oops, two counts on E, sorry about that. Then two counts to B, back to E for two counts, B, E minor, counts for D, two counts for G, and then I'm back into my verse. If you're going to sing along with it, it'll sound a little something like this. Like a river flows, surely to the sea, darling, Take my whole life. 
Thank you for joining us for our piano lesson today. I really enjoyed taking you through it, and I hope that you join us next time when we will talk about how to build chords and how to read chords in your uh, lead sheets at home. This program was brought to you by MC22, with special thanks to Riemann Music for the space to film our program. Thank you, and see you next time.